All right. Blessed, wonderful morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, February 24, 2021, and we are back for another session of Unplug 2.0 webinar series. Good morning, good morning sa ating mga early birds sa FB Live. Mag-ingay po kayo dyan. I saw 20 people na talagang early bird talaga sa ating video. Ano? Saan man po kayo na nanonood, please let us know. Let us know sa ating comment section box para ma-shout out natin yan later. At syempre, sino po rito ang present pa rin since session 1? Taas po ang kamay, sige nga po. Sino ang nakasubaybay simula po nung lunes? Comment them down below din po sa ating comment section box. Alright? So tingnan natin sino mga present dyan. Just let us know. Shout out din po sa lahat ng ating mga professors na nasa Mount Course facts. <laughs> Virtual hugs po sa inyong lahat. Laban lamang po tayo. At sa ating mga students, hopefully registered na po kayong lahat. At kung hindi pa naman po, don't worry because yung size team po natin, uh, sabi po nila size will be reopened starting February 26, 2021. That's on a Friday. To give you guys um, additional time to find slots and enlist or cancel courses. All right. Pagbati rin po sa ating mga teachers, parents, students, at lahat ng ating mga registered participants. As of today, we already have 604 registered participants. We really hope po na we could all together chillax a bit from all our responsibilities. This time, let's prioritize self-care. Ayan. Ngayon, kung wala pa rin po dito yung inyong mga friendships, mga classmates, mga colleagues, abagisingin na po natin sila. Let's take or uh, let's learn another unplug activity through art therapy. Itag nyo na po dito sila sa ating FB Live. And please share this video as well para mas marami po ang matuto at makapakinig sa umagang ito. Alright, I hope on board na po tayong lahat. Time check, it's 10.03 in the morning. Welcome to Unplug 2.0. Relax, de-stress, and recharge using non-digital activities webinar series with the theme Life in full bloom. Blossom and live with optimism and open mind. Kailangan, kailangan po natin yan ngayong uh, talagang madami po tayong challenges na kinakaharap. We are now on our second session entitled Brush and Bloom. Basics of Botanical Painting Using Watercolor. So last, man, last Monday po, we were inspired how to start acrylic painting as a beginner. This time, let's learn how we can make watercolor painting. I am Cheryl Hermosa Ebron, University Extension Associate and Training Coordinator of UPLB Learning Resource Center, and yours truly po will be your moderator for this morning. Just a few friendly reminders for our webinar. Always keep your comments helpful and considerate to the speaker, moderator, and to our fellow participants. And second, if you have questions, just feel free to comment them down below our comment section and make sure those questions are relevant to our topic. Most importantly, please do not forget to answer the evaluation form after the webinar. Our team, hashtag Team LRC, will deeply appreciate for your comments and suggestions. And please be reminded the deadline of submission of responses will be until 7 p.m. today. For those who requested for a weekend session and for those who will not be able to join us this morning, don't worry po because you can always watch the recorded video or videos on our Facebook page. As of now po, our social community has reached or reached more than 57,000 followers. We are truly humbled po and grateful at the same time for your overwhelming support. Also, we will upload all our sessions on our YouTube channel so you guys can watch the replay there. Just search UPLB Learning Resource Center on YouTube. And there are number of, a number of learning materials for there. Feel free to watch them all. As of now, we already have 1,410 subscribers. So keep them coming po. Ah. Please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that notification bell so uh, you are always updated with our videos. Also, please use our official hashtag for this webinar series. That is hashtag LRC Unplug and hashtag Life in full bloom. All right. So, ayan. let's start our session po with a short energizer. If you have been attending our webinars, you already know the drill. Well, for first timers po, don't worry. These steps po are pretty easy. First, 
only uh, you only have to open a new browser or a new window and go to www.menti.com. Ayan, kita nyo rin po yan sa ating screen. And then second, please use our key code which is 11 or 11551139. Ayan, dahil medyo high-tech, high-tech, <laughs> high-tech po tayo or high-tech, just scan the QR code, oh, ba? And be directed immediately to our Mentimeter website. Let me just uh, also post the link to our comment section box para po makasunod po yung mga ngayon pa lang makakasubok ng menti.com. Ano po? So, ayan. It's already posted there. Just click it and then you will be directly um, going to the Menti website. All right? Now, let me share my screen so that we can all see the live results of our menti.com. Okay? Let me just check. All right. So, our first Actually, isang question lamang ito. Um, kung nung Monday, tinanong natin kayo kung ano yung book personality ninyo. Ano, this time, ano naman yung inyong desktop computer personality? <laughs> so, there are three choices po there. Una, cluttered. Second, organized. And then yung pangatlo, both. Which one are you? Alin po kayo dyan? So, please feel free to uh, choose. Okay? I'm seeing here on my screen po, there are 23 people already answering. Ayan. Thank you so much. So far, merong both. Ano? Both cluttered and organized. Alin ka kaya dyan? Sige nga. Cluttered ba ang yung desktop, computer, yung home screen, or organized? Meron pong dalawa na umamin, na cluttered talaga. May pito po na hmm, talagang organized na organized. At may pangatlo po na both. Ako po, to be honest, I both then. Kasi hindi naman laging organized ano, dahil minsan talagang uh, may time na busy. Pero hindi ko rin po kinakaya. <laughs> Inorganize ko pa rin po siya just for me to uh, be able to find what I need to find kapag kailangan. And then kapag talagang yung downloads na folder ay sobrang dami na, talagang nire-recycle ko na po siya. Tinilalagay ko na siya sa recycle bin. Alright, so ayan. So far, talagang leading po. At as we see or here on our screen, leading po ang both. So, talagang minsan organized, minsan cluttered. Pero sabi nga po, diba, let's find time to declutter our home screen. Because one is uh, for us to access our files easily. And then two, so that your computer won't slow down daw po. And then three, sabi po, outer order contributes to inner calm. O, oh, ba? Sabi nga po ni Marie Kondo, ba? Discard everything that does not spark joy. Pero paano po pag thesis yon? <laughs> Oy, wag ganon. Hindi applicable yun <laughs> sa thesis, ha? Para lang yun sa mga files na uh, doesn't serve us anymore. Tapo na po yan para hindi na makagulo pa. Alright? So, thank you guys for participating in our energizer today. Uh, we hope you're already energized to uh, learn another way to relax, de-stress, and recharge this morning. Tama na po muna yung isang question. So, let me just stop sharing this. Okay. And then, let's move forward. Ayan. Let's move forward to um, our online art gallery. O, diba? Social. Let us, uh, allow us to share with you the artworks of our participants last Monday po for our session one on Paint Your Stress Away, Acrylic Painting for Beginners. This is Ayun nga po, sort of an online gallery. Social, ano? Meron na palang ganun, online, ga online gallery. Let's view them all together. All together po, no? So, let's see. Ayan. Si Cheney Palatino Rodriguez, she shared, ayan, she shared yung kanyang um, uh, painting using acrylic. Ayan. So, thank you very much for sharing this, ano, your art piece, uh, Cheney. Next po, I from... Bing Columna Montenegro. Shout out na rin po yan ha. Ito po yung kanyang caption for her uh, art piece. Sabi niya, since I don't have space to plant cacti, I just painted one of them. No maintenance, just hang. O, diba? When I say no maintenance, it also means no worries. My cactus plant will survive. For sure po, dahil nasa painting na siya, immortalized na siya. Ano? And then next is from Pinky. Ayan. Ito ay uh, snake plant, tama no? Mga plantitas at plantitas pala. No? <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing your artwork, o ba? Next, artwork is from Che Tamayo. So yung medium po na ginamit niya dito ay 
MBGI uh, WAP, Watercolor Basics, Long band, bond Paper, and then Paint Brush. And then meron din po siyang caption for this one. Ito, I, I honestly would say medyo naiyak po ako dito, pero we are uh, thankful that this, uh, yung session po natin last Monday was, uh, you know, an instrument for her to be able to process her emotions. Ayan po, sabi niya po, the webinar episode uh, last Monday was about life in full bloom. And it's like four hours before the webinar starts, I got a message that our cousin passed away due to cardiac arrest trying to digest the news. I was thinking, why life in full, full bloom? Yet someone died unexpectedly. Ayan. Next po, ay yung kanyang caption pa rin. So as for starters for the painting skill, I painted periwinkles. Why periwinkles? I love its simplicity, but vibrant colors. I used rose red shade. And I'm seeing our cousin Kate through it. She was in her late 20s, supposed to bloom a lot more, who is just starting to embrace her role as a wife and mother to a young child of hers. The painting is supposed to have a white background to highlight the lovely shade of red, but the overwhelming emotions of yesterday are, are seen through a combination of deep green shades, ultramarine blue, white and lemon yellow around the pairing winkles, that I wasn't able to apply the stop to wash your brush so not to overpaint. It may kind of mess up, but literally yesterday was a day of painter's stress away. So, Ms. Chet Tamayo, uh, our deepest condolences po and um, virtual hugs to you po and your family. All right, next artwork, please. Ayan. We also have a participant from National, National University of Laos. She is Alida Sengsat. A fourth-year communication student po. So, ayan po yung kanyang artwork. A winter flower. O, diba? Ang ganda. All right. Do we have another one? All right. So, that's all about it. Thank you very much, everyone, for sharing your art pieces. Ano? Uh, talaga namang uh, hindi madali no, na, na mag-paint talaga. Ako po personally, medyo may takot pa ako ng konti kapag nagpe-paint kasi I don't know how to control yung mga yung mga yung yung paint o baka masyadong ma-overpaint pero sabi nga po lagi dun sa quote sa Canva pag nagki-create kami ng aming mga post sa Facebook sabi ni Andre Matisse creativity takes courage and that every uh, artist starts as an amateur so again thank you thank you everyone for inspiring us to also create our own artworks by posting your own uh, art pieces on the Facebook page. Okay? All right. So let's move forward with the main part of our session. Gina ba kayo? G pa rin ba? Well, I hope you're still G. So let me once again welcome sa ating Zoom space our speaker. He is an assistant professor at the Department of Development Communication at the Visaya State University main campus in Baybay, City Leyte. He teaches undergraduate and graduate courses in DevCom and Culture and the Arts Education. Currently, po, he is a Doctor of Philosophy candidate at the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, for his doctorate degree in DevCom with extension education as cognate. To share with us how to brush and bloom through botanical watercolor painting, let's please welcome back Professor Jude Noni A. Salis. Sir Jude? Good morning. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Good morning to our sir. participants. I'm glad to be back once again. Best regards to all the LRC uh, staff who organized this webinar and also to our participants. Sige po, Sir Jude, you may not have the Zoom space. Okay. So, um, for this morning, uh, my topic is about uh, painting uh, bot uh, botanicals or painting using watercolors botanicals. No? So to talk about botanical painting, it's not only limited to painting of flowers, but we can virtually paint any part of, of a plant. No? So you, you may paint the fruit, you may paint the leaves, you may paint the, the flowers, the seeds, uh, the roots, the stems. So um, botanical painting is actually a special type of area in painting wherein uh, plantitos and plantitas and even uh, plant scientists will, will indulge into. No? So, but to make this topic 
very friendly, especially for the beginners or for those who are still pondering to, to paint uh, botanicals. Um, I'm trying to share, I'll be sharing actually a demonstration that is for the beginners. No? So uh, usually when we try to talk about botanical painting, it's sometimes people misinterpret it, that one as purely uh, a scientific practice. But actually, uh, botanical painting and illustration uh, should also be enjoyed by ordinary, ordinary people, not only botanists or naturalists. No? So um, there, is, there is a common notion that um, watercolor painting is only for children. Actually, it's not. Uh, watercolor painting has been with us for many centuries. And it's even ahead of acrylic painting. Before acrylic paints were developed, watercolors were already developed. No? So uh, watercolors in their own right is a classic type of painting material. And uh, watercolors are even considered as the most difficult medium in, in painting. No? So because uh, this is not to discourage you, but uh, most, uh, most people who have experienced painting uh, usually face the dilemma of, of, of trying to redo a lot of their artworks because in watercolor painting, if you commit mistakes, you have to redo, you have to look for another clean sheet of paper. That's why uh, the demonstration, for the demonstration, I used simple subject matter wherein it's not, uh, it, you, you won't be stressed in, in thinking that, watercolor is a difficult uh, painting medium to, to, to master. No? So uh, without further ado, I'll, I'll try to turn you over to my presentation so that you can see the, the details of the things that I'm, I'm trying to share to you. Watercolor paints are diluted with water, making them easy to clean up and use. They can be diluted even after the paint has dried, meaning fresh colors can be blended into dried color and washes can be used to cover large areas quickly. Watercolor paints are relatively less expensive to buy compared to oil and acrylic paints. Very quick to dry, and is open to several application techniques such as splashing, washing, and dripping to create expressive paintings. However, watercolor techniques are difficult to master. Mistakes are difficult to correct, and just a few drops of water can damage a painting. There are several forms of watercolor. Wet tube paints, moist pan paints, dry pan paints, watercolor pencils, and liquid watercolors. These paints are also available in cheap student grade recommended for beginners and the more expensive artist grade paints for more advanced artists. All paints are either available individually or in color sets. You can buy individual colors to suit your preferences and style as you develop more confidence in watercolor painting. There is a wide range of brushes on offer, but round, soft hair brushes are the mainstay of watercolor painting. You can create a wide range of brush strokes with a small selection of round brushes. Other brush types on the whole lend themselves to specific tasks such as washes or fine details. High quality brushes can be very expensive, but you don't need to spend a great deal. The main consideration is to determine whether the brush is supple, have a pointed shape, and able to carry plenty of water. The primary support or painting surface for watercolors is paper. It is manufactured in many different ways and has many different properties, colors, 
sizes, and weights or thickness. You can buy paper in several forms including individual sheets, rolls, bound sketchbooks, and pre-stretched watercolor blocks. Watercolor surfaces are also classified into three basic types, rough, cold pressed, and hot pressed. Thin watercolor paper is 160 grams per square meter or GSM, medium is 300 GSM, and thickest 640 GSM. Thinner watercolor papers may need stretching. Stretching involves soaking watercolor paper thoroughly with water, briefly and laid flat on a piece of strong board. The sides are then secured with gum paper tape or staple wire. The paper should have no air bubbles or cockles. Leave the paper to dry overnight. Once dry, it is ready to use and you have to keep the paper on the board while painting. Making color charts is a great way to practice color mixing watercolor. You can keep them as a reference for subsequent projects. If you are new to watercolor painting or haven't painted for several years, it can be difficult to know where to start. One of the best ways to overcome hesitancy in tackling a new painting is to choose a subject that excites and inspires you. This way, you are likely to feel impelled to express yourself and your painting will be authentic and heartfelt. Honing your observational skills is the first step to creating a successful painting. With a good understanding of your subject matter, you will be able to depict it more convincingly. In watercolor painting, there are two basic techniques in laying paint. Applying paint in wet paper is called wet in wet and allows the paint to spread and blend with other colors. This creates soft colors and lines, but doesn't give you much control. If you lay paint on dry paper, called wet on dry, the pigment won't spread as easily, allowing you to make crisp, precise marks and apply strong color. In this demo, I will be painting very simple objects such as a reference photograph of oranges and lemons. You have the option to use real objects if you like. Prepare your watercolor paper a day before painting. If you have to soak and stretch your paper, you will have one day to allow the paper to dry. Only air dry soaked and stretched watercolor paper phasing up. Do not dry under the sun or the paper will buckle if the drying time is too fast. Position your reference photo in front of you or if you have a real still life setup, be sure that they are arranged in a lighted table in front of you at a visible distance. Study your reference first before drawing to be able to choose the best angle that you wish to draw and paint. First, draw lines and map out the shapes by imagining the slanted angle of each motif. These lines will soon be erased. They are there to help maintain shapes by determining the angle to which the fruits are slanted.
Second, start by painting the brightest color, yellow. Leave the watercolor paper white to make the brightest spots of the lemon. By blending in some green like a secret ingredient, the sourness of citrus fruits can be highlighted. While painting, it is important to look closely and think, does the color reflect somewhere? If you look really closely, you will see that the yellow of the lemons reflects in the shadow. Since the lemon also reflects on the orange, add a little yellow there too. Don't forget to add paint where the orange reflects on the lemons and in the shadow. Do not paint it flat and thick. Instead, make a sphere by focusing paint on the brighter and darker spots.
Lay the colors while wet. Paint the bulge of the orange fruit a little darker and then move your brush over to the shadow and the lemon. For the shadow beneath the fruit, lay on a light purple type of gray. Let's have another demo. This time, we will paint an imaginary bunch of cosmos flowers. First, draw a light pencil sketch of the cosmos flower bouquet. Be sure that you have seen a real cosmos flower or those in a photograph to understand their distinctive features before you paint. Remember to leave the lightest areas of the flowers alone, apply clean water to the whole surface with a brush and then paint ultramarine blue over it. Blend green below for leaves. Be careful not to make all their contours too obvious as they will become flat like pressed flowers. Once the paint has dried, start painting the shape of each flower from the outside to the inside. You may use a hair dryer to hasten the drying time, but be careful not to position the hair dryer too close. Use a side-to-side -side sweeping motion when moving the hair dryer at least 8 inches away from the surface. Next is to paint the leaves and complete the painting by adding a three-dimensional feel to the center of the flower or stamen and bring the background color out to the front as well. Those are two of our watercolor painting demos. In the first painting, I started painting with a positive space, which are the shapes of the fruits. 
On the second painting, I focused on painting the negative space. That is why the background was painted first. I hope you enjoyed the steps how a watercolor painting is made. I am encouraging you to try watercolor painting and enjoy the surprises that it brings. See you next time for another painting lesson. Thank you so much, Sir Jun, for that very colorful presentation po. Ayan. So, nag-enjoy pa kayo dun sa, sa mga colors na nakita natin kanina. I'm sure our participants will be having questions, sir, about uh, sa techniques, ganyan. So, uh, tingnan po natin yan later, okay? So, we'll just quickly or immediately go to our question and answer portion. But let me just have a shout out <laughs> sa ating mga nanonood lalo na sa ano sa ating uh, mga early birds kanina nakita ko na si Lima, si Ma'am Che Tamayo, sila Ivy Amor Lam Lambio, good morning sa mga present since day one ng ating Unplug 2.0 webinar series, good morning kay Joseph Hermitano, kay Miss Jojo Rington, okay lang po kahit na miss niyo po yung session one, you can always um, watch the ano po, the recorded video. Okay? And then, kay Lovelyn Seralde, ayan. At kay Almira Boniel, good morning. Kay Winfield Buscato, good morning. Shout out din po kay Julio na nanonood sa atin. Yung at, uh, anak po ni Sir Chico na talagang magaling din po magpaint. Ayan, he's watching right now, Sir Jude. And then, kay Lanlan Medyodia, kay uh, Zaira Erodias, Linnea Untalan, Jason Burlasa, Agnes Arcelia, Sheila, Seron, and Chanis, good morning. Kay Jaika Villate, good morning. And, kay, ayan, meron na tayong mga questions. Pumapasok na po sila. Oh, planets daw ang gustong i-paint ni Yulia, sir. <laughs> kay mami raw niya yung flowers, sabi nung anak ni Sir Chico. <laughs> Ay, gusto ko rin pong batiin yung aking baby na nanonood po siya. Every time po na nag-ask tayo ng question, Saan po kayo nanonood ng ating session? And he will immediately reply, sa computer! <laughs> Totoo naman po sa computer sila na tayo na nanood. Ayan, meron na po tayong question sir from Miss Nelin Onavilla. Sabi niya po, how do you preserve and frame watercolor paintings, Sir Jude? Ah, okay. Um, usually, we preserve watercolors uh, through the use of frames with glass. Uh, but if you have several watercolors, uh, you can actually keep some of them in, in storage, you can just put them in big envelopes with uh, wax paper on top so that they won't stick. Uh, I don't uh, recommend uh, you to be spraying your watercolor paintings with watercolor varnish because there are certain brands that will turn the paper of your watercolor painting yellow. So before you use this uh, aerosol type of watercolor varnishes, be sure to read manufacturer's instructions and be sure that uh, when, when you will paint watercolors, the kind of paper that you will use should be acid-free. Okay, so acid-free watercolor papers are usually watercolor papers that are 100% cotton. So when you, when you buy watercolor papers, be sure to also check the archival quality of your watercolor paper because that influences um, how your watercolor papers will will last. No, so some watercolors, so, some watercolor paintings last for more than a hundred years. But uh, if you are not careful with handling them, especially when you hang your paintings uh, close to areas where there is damp, uh, wet, or leaking ceilings or uh, wet walls or close to the 
the kitchen wherein uh, fumes will affect the the painting then it will shorten its life now so uh, the most common ways to preserve watercolor is framing it under glass and properly sealed at the back of the frame no so at the back of the painting it should be properly sealed properly taped so that no insect or molds can get inside and then uh, another advice is uh, every five years or every 10 years depending on how dusty or dirty the the watercolor uh, painting becomes because sometimes the frame will accumulate dust it is advisable to check the back side of your water your framed watercolor to check if there are molds or insect insects or or dirt uh, and uh, if there is a problem i recommend that you you try to remove the painting from the frame and have it reframed or you can just frame it yourself you just remove the the backing the backboard you remove the watercolor that is taped in there the mat board that separates the painting to the glass then you wipe the glass with isoprophyll alcohol, let it dry completely, then reframe the painting. Or if the frame is damaged by insects, you have to bring uh, the watercolor painting to, to a good framer and give the framer in proper instructions on how to handle the painting, especially if the painting is quite old. So uh, if you are a watercolor collector, you can rotate your paintings no, in your display. So after five years, if you want to change the, the watercolor painting on your wall, you can just remove the painting from the frame and replace uh, another painting inside the frame. So the previous painting could be kept inside their paper envelopes, uh, laid flat in a special cabinet. So most uh, watercolor art uh, painting collectors have a special cabinet uh, wherein they can lay their paintings flat. Uh, and uh, they, they put their naphthalene balls to discourage moth from eating the eating the paper and uh, be sure that the place is cool uh dry the temper the 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 atmosphere in the room where you keep it is dry so some collectors install air conditioning system to their big collections but for 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 most of us uh, who have only a few collections then uh you we can just rotate you no know, remove every now and then the watercolor painting has have to breathe no so I have to be removed from the frame and allow it to breathe because it's just paper that's it okay thank you so much sir drew miss maylin villa i hope that answers your question and i guess you're na answer na rin yung question ni sefus quinones sabi niya po kasi do you recommend acid free paper so sinabi na ni sir yes, dapat, yes. yeah acid free paper dapat Madami pong nagpapasalamat si Miss Maris D. Ayan, shout out po kay Ma'am Maris D. Thank you daw po, Professor Jude. At si Ake, Ke, ang galing-galing daw po, sir, sabi niya. Thank you. And then si Leo Jeon, Miss Leo Jeon, thank you for this YouTube upload. Pwedeng-pwede daw po niyang mapanood habang, ayan. I missed session one yesterday, yesterday due to a meeting in our division, Go LRC, for Miss D ng IBS. Okay. And then... Let's check. Okay. Ito ma, sir, kay ano to? Kay Norma Villanueva. Sabi niya po, if a red beginner, do I start on wet paper? I'm actually like beginning because it has been more than 18 years ago that I did some watercolor painting with Mr. Fernando Sena at Vargas Museum. Yes. 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 Um, usually, I have here a, a sample of a stretch watercolor paper I brought with me. This is a stretched watercolor paper. So the paper is now dry. Dry and it's taped with gum paper tape. So when you, when you start painting with your watercolor, when you start painting with watercolor, it's not necessary that you have to wet the paper again. It depends on your technique. So if you want to create a soft cloud or a soft background because you're painting a landscape, then you have to apply water first before applying the color so that you can create a soft cloud-like effect so that's wet in wet technique wet on dry is you can just directly paint over the pencil marks that you've made to create a crisp border now so in watercolor painting it's not uh it's not only one technique or approach you can actually combine 
two techniques. You may start with wet on wet, then you use a hair dryer to, to dry the surface before applying um, a watercolor, another, another color from your palette, and that's what you call as wet on dry because the, the surface is already dried before you, you apply the next color. So uh, in watercolor painting, patience is the key. No? So if you don't have a hair dryer, then you have to really wait for the watercolor to dry a little bit before you apply another layer or else your colors will become muddy. You know? And uh, over soaking the watercolor paper might or may tear the paper. Uh, but thicker watercolor papers that are 100% cotton and acid-free um, have, have no problems at all, especially the 300 or 640 GSM. The, the thinner ones, especially for, for, for student-grade watercolor papers, you have to be very careful because if you don't tape the corners, it might crinkle and create pools of water. So uh, to solve your problem also on, on working with a wet surface, on wet and wet, uh, be sure to also use tissue paper to wipe the tip of your brush before placing any color or water on the surface. So just enough to allow the water to flow. So in watercolor painting, the technique is actually pushing the color, not rubbing the brush on the paper. Because if you uh, become very aggressive in brushing the surface of the paper while it's wet, there's a tendency that the fiber will uh, will be will be roughened or come off, no? So you will be creating textures on your paper. So be sure, soft touch only. Soft touch. Push the the water on the surface of the paper. So that's the technique. Pushing the water with your brush, not rubbing your brush on the surface of the paper. Thank you, Sir Jude. Yun po pala yung mali ko, sir, because I rubbed the brush. Yeah. So, <laughs> Parang makeup. <laughs> Parang makeup. Binabra uh, you rub it on your skin. Kasi, but uh, but watercolor is just soft touch lang. Uh, uh, po kasi sa makeup, sir, we, we blend, di ba? Yeah, we you blend. You blend. Brush. Kasi yung, yung, yung warmth ng skin mo will help disperse the color and the pigment of your makeup. So yun ang reason. Uh, so ito pong watercolor, sir, medyo kailangan po ng TLC, ano po? Yes. Um, uh -huh. Sabi niyo po, patience is the key. Yeah, Pero, and it also makes you more relaxed. Yung ano mo, yung, yung, yung nerves mo, yung, yung muscles ng hands mo are disciplined. And then it tries to, it tries to uh, encourage you to, to be more lighter in your touch, no? So parang light lang talaga sure. Yeah, sure. light lang ang touch okay. niya. And then you uh, push, not rub or brush talaga na. So yes, yes. Tapos yung yung ano, yung surface ng uh, yung pagposition mo ng watercolor paper mo on, on top of a table, pwede siyang medyo angle. I'll try to demo ha. Medyo hindi gani, hindi totally flat like this. Mm -hmm. Pero medyo tagilid ganun. Okay. So that when you when you apply more water, it, the water will just slide, no? It will just slide down. So sometimes drips uh, give a good uh, artistic effect on your watercolor painting. So because if you lay, lay it very flat like this, pools of water will accumulate in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it will soften your paper. So it's good that you tilt it a little bit. You, can, you may place a book, not a very thick book below or beneath the surface, so that uh, your your plywood with your watercolor paper will be a little bit slanted. Uh. Okay, sir. Thank you, po. Thank you for those tips. Yes, sir. Were you able to mention the stretching? Yung yeah. Pot? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's the stretching. Sample. Uh, ito yung sample ng watercolor paper na medyo manipis. This is only one hundred sixty GSM. So manipis lang siya. So what I did is. I wet, I, I, I soak this for two minutes in a, in a basin of water. Uh, nakita nyo naman kanina sa demo ko in the photo. Uh, just very briefly, don't soak it for a long time, like an hour or even more than 30 minutes because uh, masubrahan ng loosen yung fiber ng paper. So when you put the paper here, what na? wala na, rot, na, 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 na yung paper kasi na over soak. So yung maninipis na papel, Ano la lang? Simple, uh, short soaking time lang and put it, position it in the middle of your plywood and then use 
uh, gum paper tape. Yung gum paper tape, nakita niyo yung sponge beside when I when uh, in the photo. Yung sponge, yung yung kitchen sponge nga, uh, be sure na wala siyang sabon, walang oil. Uh, just use plain water tapos basahin yung back ng ano ng ating ng ating paper tape then you you just stick it uh medyo me, lagyan mo ng ano pencil mark na about one fourth inch or one half inch sa edge para gumawa ka ng margin pencil mark na margin before mo iso para when you when you start taping it at least meron kang guide kung saan lang hanggang yung ano uh yung tape because some some if they don't make a a pencil mark on the edge or a, or a margin merong tendency na hindi equal yung pagka position ng gum paper tape so when the paper is already ano mounted you lay it flat like this on an in an area location wag mong expose sa sun or don't use hair dryer don't be impatient Uh, stretching water color, color paper needs also patience aside from painting. You have to put it in a dry, well-ventilated place and allow it to dry overnight. So you will notice na yung, ano, yung, yung paper will have a drum-like surface. Parang inat na inat siya, stretch na stretch because the fibers will return back to their normal state and you will have a wrinkle-free or cockle-free paper where you can use it for painting. So once naka-stretch na siya, when you paint over it, you won't face any problem anymore with too much cockle or wrinkling unless nasubrahan ng water yung ano mo, yung paper. Okay, sir. Thank you very okay. much for those tips, sir. Uh -uh. Then, let me just um, uh, repeat, sir, na po. there are two techniques for the yeah. watercolor painting. Wet on wet and then wet on dry. Ah, yes. Apo. And then yung uh -uh. tip po dun sa wet on wet is that you use tissue paper to wipe the brush ano po yeah para not uh, you, you just you just place um, several layers of tissue paper beside your working table tapos you you dab the brush there you pat the brush there so that yung ano yung moisture will the amount of water in your brush or color will be a little bit reduced so that when you put it pero To be sure, pwede ka rin na may separate ka na piece of paper beside you para ma-test mo yung color before mo i-apply dun sa water. Mag Mayroon kang testing paper first, a testing surface. You test the color first on a separate sheet of paper before applying it to your watercolor paper. If you're not, if you're not sure about the intensity of your, of your color. Ang principle sa watercolor painting actually is the more water you, that you use to dilute the, the pigment, the lighter the color becomes. So... Uh, usually, so watercolor painting, you start with the lightest, then you move on to the darkest. In the darkest to the lightest, kasi mahirap yun. But there are also techniques which we call as lifting. Uh, you can use a clean brush to remove excess dark watercolors, uh, but allow the watercolor first to dry before do the lifting technique, or else mapupunit yung ano paper mo. Okay po. Thank you so much, sir. So yes. another question, this is for me. <laughs> Kung halimbawa po ako beginner sa watercolor and medyo hindi po ako sanay talaga sa light, will I be using wet on wet or wet on dry? Alin po yung mas okay? Uh, for ano, for beginners, I recommend you start first with wet on dry. Okay. Okay, okay. Para, may, ano, para may control. Kasi uh, in my demonstration, I mentioned there, kung wet uh, wet what wet and wet ano siya may, may may tendency na masubrahan pag uh, yung blotting no so you cannot control kung saan pupunta yung yung blotting of colors whereas doon sa uh, wet on dry since the surface is dry kung saan lang wipe mo ng brush doon lang din yung pigment uh, ma-absorb it, it it won't go to any place to any other place uh -huh. Okay, sir. Thank you so much po. Mm -hmm. Another question is from Lita Helano. Sir, what do you think daw po of China-made watercolor paper, paper available in Lazada? Um, I have nothing against China-made papers just because they're made in China. Um, ang ano lang, uh, there, there, there are, to be, to be sure, whether it's, whether it's made in China, made in the US, or made in Europe, The best way to judge a good paper is to really read the 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 manufacturer's details, no? Di ba sa Lazada we have 
manufacturer detail. So, basahin nyo doon if it's 100% cotton. If it's 100% cotton, it's good quality. Pero, it's more expensive than the 50% cotton or 25% cotton and 75% wood pulp. No? Uh, if there is wood pulp in watercolor paper, that's, that's a sign that that is not acid-free. No? So, kung may wood pulp, wood pulp deteriorates very fast and turns yellow and render the, the chemical composition very acidic. No? And tapos, 100% um, cotton uh, watercolor papers are also very absorbent. So, whether China made siya, be sure to check manufacturer's details. Tingnan mo yung, ano, yung, yung characteristic ng paper bago mo bilhin. Anyway, kung pad yung bibilhin mo or sheets, uh, makikita mo naman doon kung ano yung mga details na inilagay. But if it's not revealed, uh, just try to test the paper first. At try to test different brands of paper until you will find the kind of paper that will suit your needs. So usually, kung professional watercolor paintings yung for commission or being sold in art galleries, yung, ano, you're selling your watercolors, uh, it's, it's dangerous to be selling um, low-quality materials. Kasi pag ma-damage yun, babalikan ka ng collector mo or, or buyer. So uh, kung student lang or practice lang, uh, you, can, you can splurge on cheap watercolor papers. But as, as, as a teacher in painting, I usually advise my students na if, if you have budget and you can afford to buy the professional kind of watercolor papers and materials, experience buying the professional types so that you will see the difference. Because if you just keep on buying cheap uh, watercolor materials or watercolor art materials, hindi mo ma-experience yung, yung satisfaction and the beauty of what professional quality materials bring. No? And uh, you will really notice na kung yung mga professional na mga quality materials ang gagamitin mo, you will notice na kahit student level pa yung ano mo, yung, yung strokes mo, or even the quality of your work is not yet that professional, makikita mo na uh, the quality really improves through time no? because the, these quality materials try to assist you to create your vision. No? Unlike yung mga cheap na mga papers na pag, pag lay mo pa lang, there is a tendency that all of your pigments are absorbed or yung mga watercolors na hindi maganda, yung, yung kulay becomes flat, becomes powdery, makikita mo may mga pulbos dun on top of the paper because the pigments are not of pure quality. No? So uh, I encourage you, even as beginners, invest in good quality paper, read manufacturer's details and instructions to be guided on on what to use. Ganun lang po. All right. Sabi po ni Bing Montenegro, sir, tama po, sir, mas mahal daw po yung papel, mas maganda yung result. So, yes. she agrees. And si Miss Che Tamayo naman daw po, relate daw po dun sa rubbing kasi at times, napipil off yung paper. Parang ako po. <laughs> <laughs> Pag napil off yung paper, sir, meron na discourage na ako. Ay, hindi talaga ako marunong. So, mali pala yung ginagawa ko. Mm -hmm. And then, si... Um, Leslie Peñarada, relate naman daw po siya doon sa soaking. One time daw po, uh, she forgot it mga 30 minutes. <laughs> so nag na talaga yung paper. Okay. Another question po is from Sir Helio Crisostomo, sir. Um, siya po, buong family po nila yung nakatutok sa atin. Ano? Sabi niya, why do, you, why do you have to wet and stretch paper? Do we wet and stretch old mat boards daw po? Okay. Um, yung, what, what, what are you referring to? Yung mat board that frames the painting? Mm -hmm. Kasi when, when, we, uh, when we say mat boards, the way I understand it is it's the kind of border that you, you position inside the frame to separate the glass from the painting. Kasi hindi maganda na yung painting will stick to the glass. It will shorten its life. Oh, ganun. So you, you, you can actually recycle mat boards as long as the mat board is, is flat and not 
cuckold or wrinkled. Uh, that answers your question, Sir Virgilio. If you still have other clarifications, well, just feel free to leave them on, on our comment section box. Uh -oh. Si Brica Villate, sir, sabi naman niya, ano pong uses ng iba't ibang surface ng watercolor paper? Okay. Uh, watercolor papers will, the, the kind of surface that your watercolor paper has depend on your technique. So, for example, in botanical painting, using watercolors, it is good to use the hot pressed watercolor paper because hot pressed watercolor papers are smooth in their surface texture and they they lend their, their, their smooth surface for the details that you make for, especially for technical botanical illustrations wherein you want to include all the details of a certain plant. But if you are uh, an impressionistic landscape painter na you, you are more fond of colors rather than details, then you use the hot press, uh, the cold press or rough watercolor paper. No? So yung usually uh, watercolor artist who wants to, to create uh, texture or just an impressionistic kind of watercolor painting, they use the rough and the cold press watercolor paper. So usually there are three uh, common surfaces, the hot press, the, the cold press, and the rough watercolor paper. All right. Thank you, Sir Zuta. I hope that answers your question po. Another message from Girly po. Sabi niya po, happy to Hello, see you. Hello, Girly. <laughs> happy to see you, Sir Zud. My daughters are inspired watching the webinars. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, Girly. Girly is my former student at the Visaya State University. She's a DevCom, but she works now in a hotel in Cebu. Ariane, shout out to Ms. Girly po. And um, another message from Betty Reyes, sir. Thank you so much, Prof. Noni. Uh, you are a great painter. Excited to have won my work. Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you and also, guys, ano po pala ha? Basta meron po tayong ipopost na link sa ating Facebook page sa LRC po so that you can post your works there para makita din po ni Sir Jude yan, no? Meron tayong tinatawag na online art gallery sa ating Facebook page. Just post there your artworks from our Unplug 2.0 Session 2 on Botanical Watercolor Painting. Just use the hashtags po natin, LRC Unplugged and um, hashtag Life in Full Bloom. Okay? Going back to our questions, let me just check here. Okay. My question po si Sir Cepheus Quinones. Actually, parang nasagot na to ni Sir yung Sabi niya po, ay watercolor paintings are sensitive to light. Yan, nasabi ni Sir Jude kanina. Yung displaying technique, sir, nasabi niya na rin po, no? Yung yes, yes. Kanina, kailangan naka-glass and kailangan ma-make sure na walang mga uh, insects na, na, na pumapunta. Papasok. Yeah, uh -huh. papasok at you have to check it um, once in a while. Yes, yes. Okay, let me just check. Ayan, shout out din kay Sir Dan ng... Uh, DLRC. Hi, sir. Ang director po ng DLRC is watching us right now. Good morning. Po. Good morning po. And then we have here another comment from, from Linnea Untalan. Ayan. Sabi niya po, I tried watercolor but still having a hard time to make a good painting. As a beginner, I usually paint this subject flatly with one color and when I add other color, it becomes very weird and flat. No much depth. I recently realized that it's best not to do flat wash in watercolor. What are your tips for to make more depth sa paintings? Okay. Um, that's the common dilemma among, uh, among even among seasoned painters. No? It is a ma major challenge. So uh, in my acrylic painting session uh, last February 22, I, I stated there in my presentation that uh, value value gives the effect but color gets the credit no so value or shading is actually the major factor why you can create depth no so uh, even if your watercolor painting is very colorful it won't look as if it has depth if uh, there is no proper way of classifying different values or shading no so um, Yung shading kasi creates 
the rounded effect. Um, excuse me, the, the, the camera is in low back. So um, shading creates the rounded effect in, in, uh, no, in watercolor paintings. And then, um, okay, so we will, we will try to uh, check the, uh, no, the camera. Uh, okay, so ito, shift mo lang, mo lang muna ako dito sa, ano ko, sa webcam. Um, yung, ano, yung, yung shading mo, you can, you can manage that one if you are going to practice what you call as the value scale. No? So for example, um, you make nine rectangles, no? nine rectangles. So you number the rectangle as one down to nine. So nine will be your darkest and one will be no color at all. So with watercolor painting, if you want to practice creating depth, you, you try to mix colors. Okay, for example, your favorite color is red or you, you'll be using blue. Start with the lightest mix of blue and that will be your number two. Then add more pigment that will be your number three until you reach number nine, which is your darkest blue mix. No? So knowing how to mix the amount of water with a pigment is the key, key secret to proper shading of your watercolor painting. So it looks flat if you just use one specific value of watercolor. So kunyari, you just use number three, you just use number four lahat. So walang variation. So it's, it's the journey is from the lightest to the darkest. So the darkest colors, you save it for last. no. But be, be careful to leave white blank paper surfaces on a watercolor painting. Kasi yung white is your shine, is your reflection. Di ba? Uh, I, I, I have shown you a painting of, of a lemon. Nakita nyo doon na not all of the lemon I painted with color. Merong part doon na the, water, the plain watercolor paper is still shining through. And it serves as the shiny surface of the fruit. Because um, a word of advice, yung mga watercolor painting sets natin, whether tubes or, or pans, it has a white pigment, di ba? But white pig, the white pigment in your transparent watercolor is useless unless you use it for, um, for uh, creating effects like raindrops or splatters of rain. But most of the time, we try to avoid using white. We, we only use white pigment in watercolor if the watercolor that we're using is gouache or what we call as opaque watercolor. No? So usually white should be avoided in transparent watercolor painting because the white of your watercolor paper will serve as the white for your painting. Okay. I hope that answers your question, uh, your question, Linnea. Okay, I'm discourage, no? Dapat talaga, I think, sir, no, yung key is that you experiment. In yeah, the... experiment and come up with variations in your tone. So usually, sa isang mixing plate, Kunyari, there are eight different wells in your mixing plate. What you will do is uh, you assign numbers sa mixing plate mo. Uh, mixing, uh, well number one should be the lightest color and well number seven, uh, well number eight will be the darkest. So prepare mo na yung lahat ng mga variations ng, ano mo, ng, ng intensity ng colors mo. Then perform your exercise and try on your next watercolor painting. Kunyari, uh, gagawa ka ng clouds. So come up with clouds with this light tone and then the areas with the shadows na parang uulan will be the darkest area. So it's just a matter of practice. In watercolor painting, practice talagang kailangan if you want to perfect your craft. Opo. So parang hindi siya flat tsaka magmukha siyang yes. parang uh, real, sir. No? Parang yes. kuha mo yung saktong uh, real image. Yeah, diba, uh, I know I know you, Ma'am Cheryl, that you are fond with makeup para makarelate din yung mga viewers natin, especially the the uh, women na viewers natin. Diba, when you make eyeshadow, 
di ba you start with with the more lightest the, with the lighter tones and then kung gusto mo na mag parang sunken or deep set yung mata gamitan mo yung ng darker na eye shadows di ba yes. ganun din yung watercolor painting if you want to to paint a face a portrait of a woman for example and you want na deep set yung eyes niya then ganun din prinsipyo doon in, in makeup so you, so that our female viewers or women viewers can really relate to what i'm saying about when we talk about shading and values Ang saya ko nakarelate ako, sir. <laughs> yeah, actually, you just have to put the lightest color dun sa sa eyelid and then kung gusto mong lagyan ng parang yun nga, deep set, you have to work on the darkest. Yes, wow. yes. Wow. Thank okay you so na. much, sir. <laughs> All right, going back, sir, sa question po ni Sir Virgilio Fesostomo dun sa matte boards. Sabi niya yes. po, yes, but we intend to use matte boards for water coloring. Okay po ba yun? Do we have to wet and stretch it? Ah, yung matte board yung gagamitin mismo for watercolor painting. Mm-hmm. Oo, kasi um, the, the, way, the, way, the way I understand the question is that when you say matte board, he's referring to some sort of a, a type of illustration board na makapal. No? So you can also use illustration board for watercolor painting. Ang problema lang sa watercolor, sa, ang problema lang sa illustration board or yung thick na matte board na nire-refer nyo siguro is that uh, meron siyang tendency na non-absorbent kasi of what we call as there's a special ingredient kasi sa illustration board na parang it has something to do about waterproofing. no? So, Ah, uh, meron siyang I, I I'm not sure kung ano ano ba talaga yung ano ng illustration board. Okay, this is this is an an artist illustration board, gray yung likod niya tapos puti yung harap. No? So I I use this if I do uh, botanical illustrations using pen and ink, no? So pencils and pen and ink and charcoal pencils are are best for this. Um you may use watercolor for this but you cannot you do not have the luxury of or indulging yourself to multiple layers of of watercolor no so you, yung yung watercolor paper natin yung 300 gsm na 100% cotton you can apply several layers ng watercolor tapos it absorbs yung principle ng watercolor paper kasi yung principle ng watercolor paper natin kasi is um the watercolor paper absorbs the water pero yung pigments stays on top that's a sign na maganda yung watercolor paper it does not absorb the pigment with the water a good watercolor paper lets the pigments stay on top but allows water to be absorbed through the paper and allow the pigment to dry there on top so yung mga cheaper papers it stays on uh, the 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 pigment also goes with the water down. Sa illustration board or matte board, um, yung, yung water stays longer on top with the color. Kaya nga, if you use illustration board, dapat uh, i-regulate natin yung amount of water that we use. So usually, if I use, uh, if I use illustration board, pwede akong mag-start ng wet in wet. No? So pwede kong basain muna yung surface, but just enough to moisten it and apply my color tapos yung subsequent layers wet uh, wet on dry na hindi na wet and wet subsequent na wet and wet so it's it's sometimes it's just once lang yung wet and wet technique tapos the rest will be uh, wet on dry or dry brushing so ang dry brushing is halos konting water lang ang ilalagay mo sa paint para yung ano mo yung 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 being released from the bristles of the brush are very minimal and usually dry brushing is done towards the completion of a uh, uh, watercolor painting especially realistic watercolor painting parang mag-add siya ng texture sir no yes just to add texture dry brushing mm-hmm. but uh, matte boards or illustration boards are also good with uh, Water, with, with transparent watercolors but are more useful for gouache or what we call as opaque watercolors. Kasi sa opaque watercolors, di ba, I discussed naman last February 22 na when you say opaque, uh, if you color, if you place, if you apply yellow first, 
then you when then you layer it with blue once the yellow has dried below hindi mo makikita yung yellow underneath but blue na natakpan na but with transparent watercolor when you apply yellow underneath and when you apply blue on top yung kulay ng yellow makikita and produces uh, an optical color mix na green yung resulta so it, it usually what opaque watercolors cover the previous layer transparent watercolors allows the first layer or the lower layers to show through yun ang difference okay po sir so yung magandang paper sir is 300 gsm tama po ba yes yeah, it's the medium thickness just the in enough Opo. Kasi may question ulit si Nea Passion sir, uh, follow-up question. Sabi niya ay, does the quality of the paper really affect the overall painting po? I guess na-answer niya na kanina yun. Yes, yes, yes. It affects. Opo. Uh -huh. Opo. Sabi niya sir, I am a beginner and I use 200 GSM watercolor mm. pad. Okay lang po ba yun? Minsan po kasi parang napaka-fragile nung paper. Mm -hmm. Kaya na-discourage ako magpinta kasi parang di ko ma-achieve yung gusto ko. Or kailangan ko lang talagang gaanan yung brush strokes. Also, can you recommend a brush number and type for beginners? Po? Yes. Um, for watercolor pads, yes, it's true. Some watercolor pads are a little bit thicker than the thinnest, 160 GSM. So 200 GSM yung ina advertise nila. So uh, if you're using watercolor pads and you're not traveling, kung nandun ka lang sa bahay and you're using watercolor pads, I advise you to remove one sheet from the pad, soak it quickly no just a little bit just in less than two minutes soak it in a tub then while it's wet you lay it flat on a piece of plywood that's why in our requirement dito sa watercolor painting lesson natin i required participants to prepare a, a sheet of plywood no one fourth marine because it doesn't work kasi marine plywood siya it, it it is it, it is expected ng original marine plywood can handle moisture and, and uh, prevent warping and di ba may in include ako doon na Pilox acrylic spray or acrylic acrylic paint na white kasi yun ang i-spray mo on top of the plywood to prevent water from being absorbed in the plywood and sometimes yung plywood natin have certain chemicals that will stain the paper so mag ma migrate yung brown ng plywood papunta doon sa paper if you don't apply if you don't spray uh, Pilox Pilox uh, acrylic color on top of your plywood. So it makes the surface uh, waterproof kung may acrylic na spray application before stretching your paper. So yun lang, if you're using watercolor pads tapos gusto mo na walang crinkling or hindi, para hindi ka madi-discourage, you really have to stretch your paper. Remove it from your pad, then put it on the plywood and stretch it. You tape, with it, tape it with... Uh, gum paper tape. So kung walang gum paper tape na available sa, sa store, you may staple the edges. Be sure na merong margins, pencil margins, where you where you should staple the the watercolor paper. So i-distansya mo lang ng one inch apart yung staple wire mo. And then um, once, the, once the watercolor paper becomes dry, as long as the plywood does not warp or the, as long as the, the plywood has maintained its flatness, it will become stretched. Then once the watercolor color paper with the staples is dry, follow upan mo na lang ng, ano, ng masking tape ang edges para hindi naman mapupunit in case you will accidentally touch the, the edge. Kasi staple wire sometimes when, they, when, it's, when it's totally dry ang paper, masubrahan yung stretching and there's a tendency na mag, ano siya, ma, matanggal yung uh, ma mag-separate siya from the staple wire. So, yun lang. And then, if you are taking with you your sketch pad on a trip, so, imposible naman na magdadala ka ng plywood, mag-stretching-stretching ka pa on travel, yung advice, use the wet-on-dry technique instead of wet-on-wet wet if you're using 200 GSM na, na watercolor pads. Water, watercolor pads um, are only good if you don't do so much wet on wet, wet in wet. So wet on dry is the ideal technique for 200 GSM or thinner uh, watercolor pads. Meron din tayong tinatawag na watercolor blocks. Pero most watercolor blocks are, are, are thicker, 300 GSM. Bakit tinatawag siya na watercolor block? Because ano siya, uh, glue, naka-glue yung edge ng sketch pad. 
no naka glue so even if you paint on top of it it won't buckle or crinkle kasi naka glue yung edge so once you're finished painting you can just use a letter opener to to slide it beneath the first layer that you have used and you can remove the pad so that's what we call as watercolor blocked watercolor pads mm -hmm. thank you sir Jude. And then, sir, may nagtatanong si Ms. Ms. Maris D. Prof. Jude, when do you paint the background? Siguro po yung background na nandito. Yes. Uh Oo. -oh. So, kanina, I, 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 I told you sa demo na yung first demo ko na lemon and oranges, uh, positive painting technique yun. Kasi inuna ko yung main subjects ko. And then, I, I, I introduced the shadows somewhere towards the end no so yung shadows ko will serve as my background pero uh, para ma, para mag-emerge talaga yung magandang kulay hindi ko ilagyan ng ng background na dark yung orange oranges and lemons ko and i want the work to look neat no so nilagay nilagyan ko lang ng shadow to to create the illusion of a three dimensional surface no parang nakatungtong sa lab, sa mesa yung mga fruits Yung second technique ko sa Cosmos Flower, nakita nyo naman doon na I, I painted the background first. no, In order for the shapes of the flowers to emerge. So even if your Cosmos Flowers are of a different color, you start with the background first and leave the petals white muna. So once na ma-form mo na yung, ano, yung corolla ng flowers, yung, yung, flow, yung petal heads nila, kung ma-form mo na yun, later ka na mag-add ng yellow or red to the petals. But be sure to leave uh, the white, some, some parts of the flower blank, yung, yung, yung surface ng watercolor paper makikita pa rin because that will serve as the, the highlight or shine for your painting. Kasi sabi ko nga a while ago na yung, as much as possible, don't use the white pigment dun sa watercolor sets nyo because that will make... Uh, the colors muddy if white will mix with the other colors later on. I hope I answered your question. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that answers the question of Miss Mary's di kung kailan uh, magpaint na ng background. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir, madami po nagpapasalamat sa pag-answer niyo po sa kanilang mga questions. Si Sir Virgilio Crisostomo. You're welcome, si sir. Si Miss Mir sa Betia, sabi niya po, I love the tips on shading and giving value. Ang galing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Another question, sir, from Lita Latana Helano. Sabi niya po, can we use a whiteboard to stretch paper? Whiteboard. Whiteboard na yung, ano, yung formica. Formica board, no? Meron siyang laminate na white. Okay. Um, yes, you may. Pero yung problema lang dun sa laminated boards natin, merong tendency na if the gum paper tape will become very dry, di ba you, know, you notice na per, minsan yung dinidikit natin na water-based na tape sa ating mga formica boards or whiteboards na tatanggal if totally dry na siya. Ang, ang mga tapes na medyo hindi natatanggal, yung mga masking tape, packaging tape, yung packaging tape, Nag nagiging marumi yung ano natin whiteboards natin doon kasi very sticky siya but since we are using ano we are using um anong tawag doon uh, water based na mga na adhesive gaya ng gum paper tape natin the best thing to do is experiment so i suggest na i-test mo muna yung stretching of the paper on the on the formica board or whiteboard if it works if it works for you then it will be uh, a good discovery no? because usually I don't use a formica board for stretching watercolor paper. I don't even use for paper kasi meron talagang tendency na natatanggal siya because once the uh, water-based adhesive sa tape ay nag-dry na, it tends to separate on a very, short, very, very smooth surface. But it works well with plywood kasi yung plywood merong texture and uh, meron ding tendency na i-absorb ng konti yung, yung ano, adhesive and it renders the, the paper permanent. No? So tapos meron din akong tip. Once you're finished watercolor painting, don't remove the tape na you just tear the tape in the corner of your watercolor paper. Huwag mong ga gawin yun, okay? 
if this is your painting, kunyari, natapos, man, natapos mo na yung painting mo and you want to frame this one, don't tear the tape ng ganon. Don't tear this one like this. Use a cutter, a sharp empty cutter, and tingnan mo yung edge ng paper mo, yung border ng paper mo, then you cut along the border and the watercolor paper is easily separated without tearing the edges. Kasi if you force yourself to remove the tape, tapos nandun pa yung papel mo, meron tendency na yung, ano, yung paper dito sa edge will be torn. So masisira yung painting mo. So you just use an empty cutter dito, empty cutter, cut it along, then it will just be removed. And then if you want to, re to, to reuse uh, if you want to reuse the board, you just wet this one again with water, tapos lalambot lang siya, and then you can scrape it with a knife, then you can stretch another watercolor paper again. Okay, thank you, Sir Jude. Uh, uh. I think we have two more questions po, yes, Sir. Yes. Ito naman po from Miss Glace Espedida. Paano daw, Sir, pag accidentally nahulog yung paintbrush, sa art piece, paano po mabubura yung water paint? Okay. As long as the, the paint is still wet, no? hindi, pa, hindi pa siya dry, it's easy to remove. No? So you just blot it with tissue paper or cotton ball and then uh, use a clean brush with water tapos i-brush mo lang dun sa stain. No? So usually, you have to really work fast to save the work. No? So, hindi naman, yun, hindi naman yun pwede na pabayaan mo lang and you just say it's a happy accident kung grabe na yung, yung blotting na nangyari. So, uh, what you will do is to act fast, use, use a tissue paper or cotton ball na slightly moistened lang, then you dab the area where the stain is located and then hopefully you can save your work. Yun lang. Kasi sa watercolor painting, if sobra na talaga yung stain and it it has been absorbed sa paper, tapos accidental yung nangyari, accident yung nangyari, then sad to say you have to redo your work. You have to start all over again if sobra na talaga yung natapo na kulay dun sa, sa work mo. And it's a very sad reality in watercolor painting being a very difficult painting medium. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Thank you po. Uh Sir, doon sa three, ako po, question ko lang po ito. Doon po sa three na paintings natin, sir, di ba? May acrylic, may oil, tapos may watercolor. Yes. Alin po, sir, doon yung parang pinakamadali pagka pag beginner ang gagawa? Um, okay, order. Order of ranking. Apa? Easiest and very forgiving yung acrylic. Mm -hmm. Second, yung oil. Third, yung watercolor, pinaka-difficult. But, the cheapest among the three, ang very affordable is watercolor, followed by acrylic, most expensive to invest is oil. Okay. Uh -oh. yung, yung oil din, sometimes artists say, ang, ang oil lang pinaka-easiest. Pinaka Kasi yung oil dries, dries longer, it will take weeks or months before it totally dry, and you can just scrape whatever errors or or nagkamali-mali ka, you can just scrape the paint and start all over again. Ang problema lang sa oil is that there are certain preparations na yung beginner talaga have a difficult time in managing kung hindi pa siya naka-experience sa watercolor painting at acrylic. Kasi sa, sa oil, you, you, you are exposed to, to the use of other chemicals like turpentine or linseed oil. And you don't use water anymore, but you use... Uh, um, other chemicals to, especially petroleum-based chemicals to uh, kung, if, kung gumamit ka ng oil, oil, ng oil and uh, you're working with, with kids, uh, I suggest kids or adults na may allergic reactions, uh, you, you can, there are actually brands of, of oil paints na ano siya, hypoallergenic or uses me, or mediums or solvents na na ano siya, friendly sa may mga allergy. So, going back to your question, sa ranking, acrylic, acrylic ang pinaka, pinaka easy and forgiving because uh, maraming range of techniques. Tapos water lang siya, odor-free pa siya. Tapos followed by 
by oil, which is forgiving kasi matagal mag-dry, you can just scrape it off. But the requirement is you must have uh, prior experience sa painting before you go to oils because the techniques are quite complicated. And of course, the chemicals, in handling chemicals, you have to be very careful. And last, yung watercolor, it's, it's the least expensive. It's the cheapest to start with, but it is the basic foundation in painting. So even in our, in our painting workshops, uh, I, 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 I tell my participants na uh, if, if, if you want to really develop more of your tal talent and skill in painting, don't be afraid of watercolor painting. Dapat ma-experience mo yun. Because with watercolor painting, yung, yung challenge of developing patience, the challenge of being careful in your strokes, the challenge of being exacting, uh, the challenge of using using different techniques that the challenge of learning how to adjust uh, shading are all there. No, but I'm not trying to say na, na I'm discouraging you to do watercolor painting kasi mahirap siya. It's, it's just like any other medium, merong mahirap, merong madali, but it's just a matter of practice talaga. Tapos, interest. So, interest. As long as you're interested, walang problema yun. Kahit anong medium pang gagamitin mo. All right. Thank you very much for those wonderful words, sir. Nagpapasalamat po, sir, si Ms. Naylin Villa. Sabi niya po, Sir Jude is an excellent painter and speaker, kaya gusto ko po makinig sa kanya. More power. Thank you po. And may humabal pa, sir, na isang question. Last na po talaga. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> si Ms. Rosemary Amparado, bakit daw, sir, mahal magpalinis ng old painting? Okay. Um... I'm not an art restorer, but I have friends who are art restorers and have attended a lot of workshops on art restoration, especially uh, watercolors. Um, mahal yung art restoration because uh, the, the people involved in art restoration um, had really undergone a special course on that and mostly art restoration courses um, Meron din dito sa Philippines. They they invite speakers abroad. I think in UP Diliman they they have they have uh, they offer courses on that also. Um, but sa art restoration kasi it involves a lot of equipment like i X-ray pa yung ano yung painting tingnan kung an anong layers don and of course the art restorer should really understand uh, the chemicals or anong paints ang ginamit. Then you have to analyze what kind of paper, what kind of fabric was used, and then gagamitan pa na mga infrared technology, etc., etc. Maraming, maraming mga steps involved no, uh, in order to save a certain piece of art or to, to determine the authenticity. Kasi art restoration uh, have, can, can really tell whether the artwork is authentic or not and uh, can, really, can even tell the age of the painting, can even tell the can, can, can even reveal the secrets of the artist, anong ginamit niya na technique. So that's why art restoration is really very expensive. So um, ga ganun, if you're an art collector, to save yourself from the expensive art restoration, uh, sa start pa lang, uh, upon purchasing the artwork, dapat you have to really uh, know how to properly take care, take care of your artwork. No? Because kasi investment naman yan. No, the painting, uh, painting uh, prices goes up um, after several years. No, especially if the artist is already a classic painter. You say classic, na uh, ano na siya, namatay na siya. <laughs> so that's what we call them, uh, classic painters, kasi namatay na. Uh, but there's still also living artists na ang yung kanilang work needs restoration. Hindi naman fault ng artist na i-restore ang art ang artwork niya. It's because mga siguro ni So uh, on your part as an artist, para din yung artwork mo hindi maka-encounter ng restoration problems, use quality art materials and then read manufacturer's instructions if you use your paint. And then storage is also very important. Okay, On a personal level, dun sa bahay ko, I have a special room where I store my paintings no some of my paintings are still are, are still within their frame some paintings are are just open but most of the time i i wrap my paintings with 
paper first and then before wrapping them with plastic. Hindi direct, direction na plastic. Tapo, uh, direction lang na painting ipasok sa plastic bag or what. Meron siyang paper because paper tends to absorb moisture. No? But every now and then, once a year or even every six months, uh, I try to open paintings, check them if merong mold growth or discoloration, etc. Tapos, uh, don't store paintings, na, especially oil paintings, don't store oil paintings na nakarap in plastic if it's destined to be stored for a long time. Mas maganda yung oil painting na naka-exposed lang sa air because yung principle ng oil painting, it's oxidation. No? Um, the paint is, oil paint is more comfortable kung nakaka-breathe siya ng oxygen. Uh, it, it tries to improve its quality kung nakaka-breathe siya ng oxygen rather than kulob siya. No? So, of course, uh, understanding the different medium that you use uh, it's also part of the restoration process. Kaya nga, mas mahal. Thank you so much, Sir Jude. Ayan. Kaya dapat quality daw yung mga materials kung talagang artist yes. yung gagawin. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, marami na pong excited na mag-start talaga ng kanilang painting, lalo na si Miss Jojo Rington. Sabi niya, she will buy the materials later daw, Sir Jude. Thank you so much yes, for always yes. helping us learn so many things, especially art po. Thank you, Sir Jude, as always. And okay, you you're welcome. Apo. And sir, isa na po dyan sa excited si Miss, uh, let me just check, si, uh, si Miss Bing. Can I just show quickly po yung kanyang artwork? Shinare niya uh -huh. po agad sa Facebook. Uh -huh. So, let's just see po quickly ano. Wow! There! That's great! That's nice! Uh -huh. Yan po kay Miss Bing, Columna Montenegro. Just finished wow, this. Wow, ganda! That's a tulip, di ba? Yes, it's po. a 30, tulip. Yeah, 30 minutes ago. Uh, just finished this one. My kind of orange. W C wow. 10.2 inches by 15. Bauhong. Tama ba, sir? Bauhong. Uh, Bauhong yung ano niya, paper. Opo. Ayan. So, guys, ha, please don't forget to share your art Ang ganda. Pieces. Ang ganda, Mambi. Yes. So, share your art pieces po sa LRC Facebook page thread para naman po ma-inspire uh, yung ibang participants to also try uh, painting either watercolor yan or acrylic. Um, mas maganda matry natin, sabi ni Sir Jude. Kailangan ma-experience mo yan. Yes, yes. Congratulations. Ang ganda ng art. Hindi, na, hindi ka na siguro beginner. You're, you're, an, uh, you're a seasoned artist. Ang ganda naman ng washes mo and the blending of the colors. Maganda. Ayan. Sige po. So, keep them coming. Keep them coming po. Ah. I just uh, post them sa Facebook page natin. And malay nyo ma-feature ulit yan sa ating third session. Uh -oh. Okay. Sir, any message po sa ating mga participants? Okay, isisingit ko lang to. For those of you who are interested to see some of my artwork, you just go to my FB page, Jude's Art, apostrophe S, Jude, J-U-D-E, apostrophe S, Art. Uh, and you can see samples of my work there. You can, you can also in the, for next week, by next week, I will be uh, uploading my my first video in my YouTube channel. Um, the name of my YouTube channel is Artists I. So capital A R T I S T S apostrophe S, then small I. Artists I. So uh, this weekend I'll be producing my my video and I'll be posting that one in my YouTube channel Artists I. So yung I, marami mga meaning yon. Uh, can you check the ano? Ayan, mayroon ulit. Ay, mayroon nang appear sa screen. <laughs> mayroon appear sa screen. Yan na naman. Kasi yung, yung camera, hindi siya compatible sa ating uh, Zoom. Anyway, uh, um, well, um, for, for this YouTube channel, yung what to expect is yung mga in-depth tutorials, mga tips, and yung I doon sa artist I, it's information, impression, interpret yung mga ano yung mga ay na related sa art kasi yun ang pinili kong name for my ano and i i found out na parang walang kaparehong page pa yun uh, walang kaparehong channel na ka kapangalan doon mm -hmm. uh. ayan sir may nagtatanong na sir ano daw po yung profile pic niyo sa FB page sa hanapin na kayo at ifa-follow <laughs> <laughs> yung ano naka naka-americana no naka-jacket <laughs> naka-formal wear Opo. Sige, isama natin yan, sir, pag pinost na po namin yung um, recorded uh, video po sa YouTube, isasama yes, po namin yes. yung 
uh, Facebook page po ninyo and yung YouTube channel po ninyo. Uh, I'm sure marami pong mag, magla-like and mag-subscribe. Nagko-color bar na. <laughs> Opo, nagko-color bar, bar, bar na. Oo. Excited na siya mag-exit. <laughs> anyway, na post na ni Sir Jude sa ano, sa ating Facebook Live, yung kanyang YouTube channel at saka FB page. Ayan, hanapin niyo na lang po 'yan sa sa FB at saka sa YouTube mm-hmm. and then uh, feel free to follow him po pas- para sa mga step-by-step na tips, ganyan. I-follow niyo lang po siya. Thank okay? you. Thank you. All right, I guess that's all about it, Sir Jude. Again, thank you so much po. Thank you would, din po. We would like to take this opportunity once again to thank you for your valuable time. So to award the Certificate of Appreciation, may I kindly recognize our beloved director, Dr. Benjamina Paula G. Flor. Let me just also quickly read the citation first. University of the Philippines, Los Baños Learning Resource Center present the Certificate of Appreciation to Jude Noni A. Salas for serving as our resource speaker in the second session on Brush and Bloom, Basics of Botanical Painting with Watercolors in the Unplug 2.0, Relax, De-Stress, and Recharge using Non-Digital Activities Webinar Series held today, February 24, 2021, given this 24th day of February 2021 at the Learning Resource Center, UPLB College, Laguna, signed by our director, Benjamina Paula G. Flor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Sir Jude. Once again, we learned a lot from your sharing. Indeed, art and science go together. Yes. We are doing art, but we have to understand the science of it. Kala ko makakaligtas na ako sa <laughs> science. Yung pala eh, as beginners, <laughs> a lot of experimenting has to be done to predict results. Oh, scientific yes. pa rin, grounded you. Scientific. Uh, no? So we are so uh, happy that you have shared your talents to help us paint our stresses away. I hope we all had a fun and learning experience today. Kaya huwag ikulong ang sarili sa mga stresses. Just paint it away. So, salamat po. At uh, we look forward to your participation in our next session on Friday and Saturday. Thank you so much, Ma'am Benj. And once again, a big thank you kay Sir Jude. Now guys, for the evaluation of this session, do not forget to answer the evaluation form after, after this webinar to receive your e-certificate of participation. Again, we will deeply appreciate po any comments and suggestions coming from you. And uh, please be reminded, the evaluation link will be up until 7 p.m. today. This is for you guys or for us uh, to reset our system po just in time for the uh, next session. Or just scan the QR code. Nakikita niyo po yan sa ating screen. So I hope kita niyo na po yan. Itapat niyo lang po yung inyong camera dyan and you will be directly uh, going to the link of our evaluation form. Okay, so medyo ipakita lang natin ng kaunti. Ayan, hindi na po natatakpan, yes, <laughs> ng aming mga muka. Kaya makakapunta na po kayo agad sa, sa evaluation link. Again, more than the certificates, we hope you are able to relax, de-stress, and recharge from this second session of the Unplug 2.0 webinar series. Reminders po, meron po tayong interesting topic again uh, upcoming on Friday. That is actually our third session of the Unplug 2.0 entitled Write It Light, Beginner's Guide to Brush Pen Calligraphy. Ayan. So ipunin nyo na po yung inyong mga brush pens. Ano po? And we are already sending reminders po sa, sa inyo through email. This session po would be on Friday. That's 26th of February. Same time pa rin po tayo, 10 in the morning. You may opt to prepare your brush pens during the webinar, but again, they are optional and not required po. Our speaker also provided free practice worksheets. Those who registered early, we sent them to your email na po. While for those who just recently registered, don't worry, we will be emailing them to you po as well. And then you may print them and have them ready with you on Friday. Excited na po kami dyan, kasi iniintay pa po namin yung... I mean, brush pens. <laughs> Hopefully, wala na siya sa China. <laughs> All right. At this point, 
We would like to thank our team, hashtag Team LRC and hashtag Unplug Team, headed by our director, Ma'am Benji Floor, with the support of our Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Dr. Jean Oluyola. On our technical side po is our University Research Associate, Joshua Michael G. Jonas, and our Webinar Production Online Director and Dear Friend, Direct Prof. Mark Lester M. Chico. Also, we would like to thank Kuya, A Kuya Allen, <laughs> Tita Allen, and Kuya Iwak po, our two other members of Team LRC. Hindi man po sila nandito sa Zoom space ngayon. Kasama po talaga namin sila sa lahat ng aming mga programa. Again, a big thank you to Sir Jude, our very passionate and talented speaker for this morning. I guess that's it for today. This has been your moderator, Cheryl Hermosa Ebron. To end, allow me to share my own reflection from the previous sessions, our two sessions on painting. This process is actually somehow like the process of how a flower blooms. Bloom is a beautiful process of becoming. Everything blooms in its own time. Just like creating a painting, no? our growth takes time because we all grow at different rates and that is okay. We may not be where we are supposed to be, but one day we will get there. Just be faithful in the now and trust the process. All right, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtutok. Kita-kita po ulit tayo sa biyernes. Stay happy, stay safe, and stay healthy. God bless you all po and bye!